top bunk trophy. I haven't been on a top bunk since eight years old. <laughs> What's going on down there? You're sleeping. Let's go to the beach. You only have to have the top bunk when you're uh. got truck and wife with you. All right, let's go. We'll get this party started. <laughs> All right, rise and shine time. Today's video is about overheads. What's an overhead? See this fun thing over right here? That's called your valve cover. And uh, inside of that, it's a bunch of little mechanisms that go back and forth like rockers. And they need to be adjusted sometime from time to time. And we're gonna use our good friend Allison to do that for us. Jeez, truck and wife, we're gonna lose a finger. Ugh. Hey, I only got nine fingers now. Woo. I swear we could get so much done if we didn't have to stop to pee every now and then. But hey, she's fun to hang. <laughs> so what's an overhead? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Got, anybody else got a zebra bag like that? Oh yeah, so what's an overhead? That's what our topic of today's video is. Um, needs to be adjusted like every 50,000 miles after you in-frame your engine, and I had it done twice before that, before I, or once before that, before I got my in-frame done. And I uh, need to do, uh, do it about every 100,000 miles. So, we'll start off with, uh, what you have to first do is get a big giant breaker bar to turn the engine. There's a little cap on the front of your air compressor, which is right above that fuel pump we just did. Pop that rubber cap out, it's a one inch drive. You get a little extension, a little four inch extension, six inch extension. Get it in there and then you're gonna be turning and on your uh, damper, the front of your uh, crankshaft, there'll be four markings. There'll be A, B, and C, and T, D, C. T, D, C is top dead center. When you're adjusting your engine, when you first put it back together like I did, you have to pin it on the side. This is a lot of terminology, guys. I'm sorry, for, but it makes sense at the, at the end of it. Um, you take this little pin that they custom that they have at the, hey guy, there's a little uh, screw that you take on the side of the engine, and when you get the TDC, you put that pin in there, and you kind of just move it just slightly, and it'll, it'll drop in, and that means you're completely top dead center, ready to be adjusted. That's when you first build your motor, and you want to put your head on, you want to make all your uh, rocker uh, arms on, and you put them on the bolt. So we're not doing that, but we're just that's what TDC is, is used for to adjust the engine when it's been taken apart and put back together. A, B, and C are what you're going to be using. You pull that bar, it's a little hard because you're gonna be, the engine's gonna be moving manually with you pulling that bar, it's a long breaker bar. Pull that bar so you get the A first, and then we're gonna have either cylinder number one in the very front or cylinder number six in the very back that's gonna be ready for adjustment. You don't know, because you can't know inside your engine where your, your cylinders are in their firing order. It's a lot of terminology, but we'll let Allison explain the sequence after that, because you're gonna go either one or six, and you can tell by which one's loose. Which one, the one that's not loose is the one you're gonna be adjusting. So let's let Allison explain that and come back. All right guys, so this is how you do an overhead. 19, open in, loosen it up. Take your Allen, and that adjust it. Use your feeler. What are we looking for, Allison? All right, so you're looking to make sure, what I usually do is I run it all the way down where it's touching the snug. And I barely take it, barely turn it back. So it and you'll slides. see the oil slide off the What's tip the of it. You want a clean off? little path. Okay. Whenever you do it, you can't pick it up though, because it'll, it'll rip it off. It'll so mess it up. So you gotta out. pull it straight out. Have a nice little path. Just and we're out. on A right now, so A is the is the first two? Or the, the Alright, so A A is either gonna be one or six. Okay. You go whichever one the both the valves are loose. Okay. See this one? The intake's down? Yep. So you know that you do one. Okay. So the next time we get the A, we'll do six. Okay. All right. So this right here is explaining how to get to A, B, and C, how we do it with the bar. And then after that, we'll do a little bit about the different motor, um, kind of the serial numbers for them. 2250, 2350, that's the year run that they were in 870, 871, and it goes back to the N14. 570 so this these two engines that we're going to talk about right now mine is a single cam 2250 and 2350 and then i'll walk over and show a long a long hood or a hood they call it and uh that has a, a dual cam it's an 871 i think it was so and you can do your makeup tutorial back here <laughs> but yeah here we go right, guys you can see right here this mark right here and there'll be a mark what's that called D damper damper you'll move those together and that's how you know you're at a and then you just keep going around 
keep moving it, the engine, until you get back to which one to be now. This process works for the 2250 and the 2350, but if you have an 871, you're gonna have to adjust your injectors, you said? Yeah, you, which pretty much you're doing is you're running the fuel out of it. They go to like 73 inch pounds. Uh -huh. So you, it's not electronic like this, and it's not a high pressure fuel. Um, so you have to manually adjust the injectors. You have to manually adjust the injectors. That's and crazy. it also has a, a whole other camshaft in there. Yeah, so they'll call it a single cam or a dual cam, right? Yep. So and then, what's the 571? So, That's just the older. Uh, the 870s uh -huh. are the, uh, the dual cam. We actually have one in there. Okay. You want to show him the head? The one that's, uh, that he's working on right there. Yep. Okay. And uh, the 22 and 23 50s and I 6 15s uh -huh. all have one single cam. Okay. And if you guys want to see the 870, our buddy in here. What's what was his name again? Uh, they call him neighbor. Neighbor. Yeah. Neighbor. So neighbor, this is his truck. I think he's on, he's on day two or day three? Day one. Day one, you guys got busy on this thing. You can see two cams, so. And then they have to do the injectors manually. So this whole piece right here, guys, this is the block, this is where it divides. Block, head, so. Just the head alone on the end frame is $5,300, so. But brand new, 40, 49, 48, not brand new. And that's what one of these big trucks looks like with the whole front end off. All right, let's get back to adjusting. Thanks for that info, Allison. On the dual cam and single cam. Okay, so once you got it adjusted, A, B, and C, and you know what kind of motor you're working with, single cam or dual cam, then you're gonna be using those feeler gauges. And she had, you have a 19 millimeter and two feeler gauges that are different depths. I don't know what those are, but Allison, if you have any questions, call her at Hey Guy or Jerry. Caitlin might even know, but probably not. She's gonna refer you to Allison or Jerry. But after that, um, and I was wrong in the, in the beginning of this video, if you go to, to A, whichever one is loose is the one you'll be adjusting, not the one that's tight, of course. I don't know what else they can So here's that video of her doing the process of adjusting, and then once you're done with that, you button it up and you fire. But we'll let her talk about Jake's uh, before we end that. All right, now you can see we're lined up with B. So we're gonna come back up top and Which one are we going to now? All right, so you're gonna check it. You're on B, so it's either gonna be two or five. Uh -huh. You see this intake valve is down on two. Yeah. You check five, both of them are loose, so that's when you adjust. Okay, so that's how you know, There's move, they move a little bit. And then number two's down. So first he's gonna check without adjusting. Jake breaks. Jake breaks. Jake's in the middle. Yeah, snug, one nice and snug. Then we'll grab blue for intake, which is the longest of the rockers, right? Yep. So loose. It's a little loose, so we're gonna adjust that one. But then that one looks like it's loose too, huh? Yeah. So both those need to be adjusted, so we'll do that. Them down to 35. There you go. So there's different sizes. This is for exhaust. That was for intake, and that's ex or that's in blue's intake and green was exhaust. They put zip ties on them to keep track of them. Plus, you can fish them out when they fall. Yep. And our exhaust was already good, so we didn't need to adjust them. All right, now we turn the motor again. Yep. All right. So we're on C now, but Allison was saying if you turn it to A, you can either be at one or at six. But if you are at one, one, five, Three, six, four. No, one, five, three, six, two, four. One, five, three, six, two, four. Okay, that's the order. If you get lucky in the first time on A, you're loose on one. All right. <laughs> you're on my pay grade, but let Allison interject. Right. So, when you're running the overhead, you also need to check the run and play on the jakes. So, you want about this much, all right? Now, on that same one, that's gonna be like, one of them's gonna be this loose. But if you're on that cylinder to adjust, so th this one had this much play in it, yeah. you need to take the shaft and rotate it, like I would rotate it toward myself, run it back down until I get this much play. What she means is you have to loosen up one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this shaft in here, these are kind of edged, you can, it'll spin. 
that's how she would adjust the jake so she's and saying. also it might, and sometimes it ain't gonna have no running play it'll be touching you gotta push it you can't rotate you can't do nothing with it so you just grab it and go opposite way okay. so i'll go towards you, then you go towards the other side and yep. it gets them loose there you go it actually says jake's on these little solenoids look at that yep that's a jake brake solenoid, jake solenoid. if you ever have, have a truck smoking like where it's like your jake brakes are stuck uh -huh. more than likely this is what it's going to be yeah when i had when my truck we needed an in frame and i was running it for eight thousand miles waiting to get in here my jakes would stick so yeah, i stopped using them do, just take your finger and push it and figure out which one it was no those are all brand new okay we replaced yeah, them all if you, uh, if you have one that you think it's not working or sticking while it's running just push down right here and you'll see it like just start doo -doo -doo -doo. oh really and that means it's... and that's how you hit the jakes on touch it i just touch it yep that's crazy little stuff we learned from allison all right we're almost done we're on the second to last one and those are jakes so what jakes do is they can retard your truck and slow it down when you're coming down a hill or anything like that or you can come and do a stop and it's they were made in jacobson don't know the state i'll have to look it up that's why they're called jakes it wasn't actually a guy named jake but i used to i used to think that but uh, it was actually designed by cummins uh celeste cummins way back in the day 1888, probably not when he designed Jake's, but he came out with them later, and uh, then they were manufactured in a town called Jacobson. So that's it, guys. That's Allison. If you want any of that done to your truck, go down there. They're a great place in Griffin, Georgia, if you're down here in the southeast or if you're on this side of the U.S. But uh, in the meantime, I'm taking this little one back here. It was getting all prettied up. We're going to go to the beach and uh, get some R&R. &R. Maybe some coffee first. Yeah, maybe some coffee first, but we're still at Sam's Club. Luckily, we got our pee out of the way delivered here last night or this morning and now uh, we just reset it's what time is it it's 12 30 so we got some good sleep we're gonna head up to uh where are we going daytona right daytona, daytona all right god bless everybody i hope that was informative if you have any questions about it or you need some preventative maintenance done or anything done to your truck give hey guy a call here's their number say bye truck and wife bye truck and at the end of the video here they are hey guy diesel it's their phone number, Griffin, Georgia, to help me do my in-frame in six days. And anything you need, they can help you get done. Great prices on the parts, OEM parts, mostly dealing with Cummins, but they can do anything for you. God bless, and thanks, that guy, for helping me out.